So in this final video on eukaryotic gene regulation, we'll entitle this flowchart, it's a very short flowchart, um, eukaryotic GR4, just like we've been doing in our previous eukaryotic gene regulation flowcharts. And in this final video on gene regulation in things like us, in multicellular advanced complex organisms like eukaryotes, we'll look at three main uh, other ways genes can be regulated. And just to understand the fact that there are so many ways that gene regulation happens in eukaryotes because there are so many complex processes that need to happen in us as compared to our prokaryotic ancestors as we've mentioned many times before. So let's get to it. What are the final three ways to regulate our eukaryotic genes? Other ways to regulate our genes are the utilization or just the presence of things called tandem repeats. These are very interesting parts of our DNA. Now, the definition of tandem re repeats is a bit wordy, but we'll get through it and I'll explain it in just a second. So tandem repeats are considered multiple copies of genes, okay? But specifically, multiple copies of genes and comma, they're actually arranged in uh, arrange, let's say, one after the other, directly one after the other in a very repeated form, one after the other, and specifically that's going to be on the chromosome, okay, so on the genetic structure, the genetic house of our DNA. Now, this is basically the idea of having uh, this following sequence. Let's say we have ATCG, I just made one up, and then right next to it I have another ATCG, and right next to it I have another ATCG, and you get the point. We have this constant repeat, they're called tandem repeats, tandem meaning right next to or with. Um, so these repeats are happening over and over and over again. Well what's the purpose of these repeats? Very interestingly, these are actually sometimes considered um, decoy sites, okay? They're actually considered decoy sites for things, uh, for transcription factors. What we mean by this is that remember how transcription factors bind to DNA and either enhance or silence things or cause things to happen? Well, what happens if you take those transcription factors, make them constantly, let's say this is a transcription factor, this square right here, constantly bind to these repeats, literally being redundant and constantly doing this over and over and over again. But because these transcription factors are coming to this tandem repeat, what if there's a sequence down the line like C, A, G, G, A, T, C that wants to be expressed? You can create a decoy of sorts by having this repeated tandem of these genes and you have these uh, transcription factors. Instead of coming over here and let's say maybe silencing this, they come over here and cause whatever is caused here. It's a redundancy here. This redundancy is what's going to regulate genes. For that reason, they're called decoy sites in which transcription factors might be sort of decoyed by, might be tricked by, and sort of utilized um, for their redundant uh, nature. So these tandem repeats uh, have a decent role in gene regulation. Another part of gene regulation would be uh, something we've actually covered already, known as post-transcriptional control. So we'll say post-transcriptional uh, control. And this is things that we've already covered and very complex processes that don't happen in prokaryotes because prokaryotes, once they make their mRNA, they just go straight into the transitional, uh, translational phases, right? But what do we do? We do mRNA editing. If you don't remember, this involves things like a five prime cap. Remember how the environment uh, let me rewrite that. That's a five prime cap. Remember how the environment outside of the nucleus is kind of dangerous and you gotta make sure this highly sort of uh, conserved mRNA molecule is well protected? Well you put something like a five prime cap on it, put something like a poly A tail on it, both of which are really good in making sure that the mRNA doesn't get degraded by those nucleases all throughout. And you also do some very fancy editing by splicing. Splicing what? If you remember, the splicing was all about taking out intervening sequences known as introns and making sure you put together, you splice together those express sequences that you want like exons. So this mRNA editing, editing is a specific way that we can regulate genes.
what we can do is we can either put a five prime cap on something. Well, these are basic basic processes that happen almost every single time. But we can do something known as alternative splicing and splice maybe one way and splice a different way later. And that actually can change the way the mRNA will be expressed and translated just based off of different splicing patterns. This is something that's really touched upon more in genetics, but for the purposes of this course, just understand that splicing is a great way to edit the mRNA. Thus, it's a great way to control the mRNA eventually. And thus, it's a great way to regulate the genes. Final gene regulation in eukaryotes that we'll talk about is post-translational regulation. So even after translation has happened, we can have something po known as post-translational control. And remember, TSN in uh, my sort of denotion is translation. Um, this is post-translational control. And in this situation, this would actually be the final modification opportunity because once you've translated, you've honestly created um, a polypeptide structure. And now you have one last shot of regulating this polypeptide structure, regulating the genes that were from this polypeptide structure. You can do this in one of two ways. So we'll, we'll actually write that down. We're going to either, we're going to modify these polypeptides that are the result of translation, because this is post, meaning after translation control. So we're going to modify, we're going to control these polypeptides by modifying them to get a functional protein. So oftentimes the polypeptide itself is not functional. We actually have to do some more uh, control and editing to it. We have to regulate it even more. We can do specific things like glycolysis, glycolization, glycolization. Okay, this is just adding, let's say, maybe a sugar molecule somewhere on the protein. This actually increases functionality because remember, we want to get a functional protein. Oftentimes, polypeptides are not advanced enough. Remember how proteins have a primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary structure? Polypeptides fall under what structure? They actually fall under the primary structure. Very rarely do we see, and almost never do we see function at this structure. We start seeing function when we get to tertiary and quaternary. In order to get there, you can do these modifications to turn this primary structure into something more functional, like a tertiary or quaternary structure. Glyco glycosation is not specifically something that does this, but it's a form of modification that's necessary. Another form of modification is phosphorylation. And you obviously already know what phosphorylation does from what we've done in ATP, what we've done in cell respiration. This is simply adding something like a phosphate. This is a huge, huge regulation point uh, for many different proteins, this phosphorylation and dephosphorylation, often done by kinase enzymes. That's something you will also learn further on as you continue your study of biology. Overall, we've completed eukaryotic gene regulation. We have one more flowchart to go in this series on gene regulation. Um, just one last point on this gene regulation. If it hasn't already been emphasized enough, this all is very complex. Very, very complex. Much more complex than our prokaryotic ancestors. Why do you think that? It's simply because of multicellularity. It's because we have specialization. It's because we have great organization. We have all of these sort of complex components that need to be highly regulated, that need to be held in check. So we have all of these mechanisms that we went over in order to regulate our advanced eukaryotic genes. And this gene regulation is what allows this specialization. It's what allows this differentiation. It what It's what literally allows us to be so complex as compared to a prokaryote, let's say. So it's worthy of appreciation, in my opinion. We'll conclude with our final flowchart in the next video.